So now we'll be learning about the peritoneal folds, uh, development of the peritoneal folds related to stomach. So you already know that the stomach is part of the gut tube, it's part of the foregut. So the, if you imagine the gut tube is like this, the gut tube is suspended into the peritoneal cavity, the primitive peritoneal cavity, through a two-layered uh, mesenchyme. So if you imagine I'm, I'm putting my hands inside the imaginary peritoneal cavity, I'm now touching the parietal peritoneum, the parietal peritoneum through which this is the posterior aspect and through which I can reflect my hands onto the two-layered mesenchyme. Okay, this is, these are two-layered mesenchyme and I can thus put my uh, hand over the section of the gut. Okay, this is the gut. Do you understand this? This is the parietal peritoneum. You have a dorsal mesentery through which the gut is suspended into the peritoneal cavity. So this is the entire uh, the format of the gut development is like this throughout. But in the foregut there is an exception. In the foregut part, okay, you have an addition in, in addition to the meso, uh, in addition to the mesentery, you have a dorsal mesentery. You have a ventral mesentery in addition. So in the foregut part, if I do the same activity in the foregut part, I have a parietal peritoneum. From the dorsal abdomen, from the posterior abdomen wall, I can run my fingers through the uh, dorsal mesogastrium. Mesogastrium is just a different name because you have the foregut here. For the main organ coming from the foregut is stomach. So uh, gastrum means stomach. So you call this mesentery as mesogastrium. So you have the parietal peritoneum on which and you can reflect it onto the dorsal mesogastrium. This is the primitive stomach. And in front you have a ventral mesogastrium which, att which attaches to the Anti ventral wall, ventral abdominal wall, or the anterior abdominal wall. All these points very important. So, what happens is this gut will undergo a rotation. Okay. Suppose this is the ventral border. Okay. This, is, this is the midline, this is the ventral border of the stomach, this is the dorsal border of the stomach. Okay. This stomach undergoes a rotation. So, you imagine that the ventral border, I am pulling this ventral border towards my right, and I am pulling my, uh, the, the dorsal border towards the left. So, can you imagine the stomach, the primitive stomach? rotates on its own longitudinal axis like this in such a way that the ventral border which was initially directed ventrally flipped to the right side and the dorsal border flipped to the left side this is point very clear so after this rotate this is a 90 degree rotation this axis on this axis the stomach will undergo a 90 degree rotation after this rotation you still have the ventral border but it is not ventral anymore it is on the right side so the ventral border got shifted to the right side that ventral border is connected to the anterior abdominal wall by the two-layered ventral mesentery, mesogastrium. And the dorsal mesogastrium is connected to the dorsal posterior abdominal wall by the two-layered dorsal mesogastrium. This point is very clear. What happens is, uh, within these two mesogastriums, the ventral and the dorsal mesogastriums, you have the development of two intra-abdominal organs. You have the development of the liver in the ventral mesogastrium, and you have the development of the spleen in the dorsal mesogastrium. Note that the stomach has undergone a rightward rotation. Okay. So the liver is forming in within the ventral mesogastrium and this is one of the reasons why the liver is on the right side of the body okay. and the spleen is on the left side of the body. Because due to one, of, one of the reasons of this movement is due to the rotation of the uh, stomach. So within the ventral mesogastrium, you have the development of the liver. Okay. So you imagine liver develops here and it becomes a large intra-abdominal organ like this. That liver is still connected to the ventral abdominal wall by the remnant of the ventral mesogastrium. What will you call that ligament? You will call that ligament as falciform ligament. You already know in gross anatomy dissection that the, the two layered uh, structure, the ligament that is attaching the liver to the anterior abdominal wall is falciform ligament. So falciform ligament is nothing but the ventral mesogastrium in front of the liver. Now if we consider that, so this is the liver, behind the liver you still have a part of ventral mesogastrium connecting the ventral border, the primitive ventral border which, are, which now we came to the right side. Okay. That border of the stomach is connected to the liver by the rest of the ventral mesogastrium. That will be the lesser omentum. Okay. That is lesser omentum. So you call lesser omentum this as the hepatogastric ligament or the hepatogastric part of the lesser omentum. So the point you need to understand is that the falciform ligament connecting the liver to the anterior abdomen wall and the lesser omentum connecting the liver to the ventral border of the stomach. Okay. That both of these are derivatives of the ventral mesogastrium. They are derivatives of the ventral mesogastrium and the liver forms within the ventral mesogastrium itself. Now we will come to the dorsal mesogastrium. What happens in the dorsal mesogastrium? This is the two layered dorsal mesogastrium. In the two layered dorsal mesogastrium, you can imagine a right leaf and a left leaf. Within the left leaf, you have the formation of the spleen. 
So the spleen forms within the left leaf and it projects to the left side. Okay. So now the spleen is connected to the primitive dorsal border of the stomach through the gastrosplenic ligament. So the spleen is attached to the dorsal wall of the stomach by the gastrosplenic ligament. Okay. And the, this spleen itself is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by the linorenal, the, the linorenal or the splenorenal ligament. The linorenal or the splenorenal ligament. There are two names for it. Linorenal or the splenorenal ligament. So the point again you have to understand it. The gastrosplenic ligament and the linorenal ligament are derivatives of Dorsals. the dorsal mesogastric. They are derivatives of the dorsal mesogastric. Now, I, you need to understand in gross anatomy, there is no ventral border or dorsal border for the stomach. Stomach has only lesser curvature and greater curvature. The lesser curvature is actually the ventral border. The ventral border turned towards this side, towards the right side. So, you have the lesser curvature on the right side, if you remember the gross anatomy. And you have the greater curvature on the left side. That is the primitive dorsal uh, border, the primitive dorsal border of the stomach. So, the stomach which had a ventral border and the dorsal border flipped to the right side like this in such a way that the ventral border came to the right side and the dorsal border flipped to the left side. This forms the lesser curvature, this forms the greater curvature. So within the greater curvature you have the gastrosplenic ligament attaching the spleen to the stomach and the spleen is attached to the dorsal, uh, to the uh, splenorenal ligament to the posterior abdominal wall. So did you understand how each of these ligaments are derived in the embryonic perspective?